We have nine-year-old twins, and they were born different. My daughter, Sharique, she has albinism, but my son, Tariq, he doesn't. The very same thing that they were ridiculed about, they're being highlighted. Born different. Sometimes don't believe we are twins. People always like come up to us and be like, oh my god, you guys are so cute. I love your outfits. And then we we say, thank you. And then we and then we be like, we're twins, and then they be like, no. And then we be like, yes. I'm looking at my things, my child. Like I'm totally different. He's more funnier than me. And I'm just kind of calm. I don't know. I sometimes annoy people all the time. But it's okay. We have nine-year-old twins, and they were born different. My daughter, Sharique, she has albinism, but my son, Tariq, he doesn't. And that was a shocker for us once they were born. Albinism means you just have no pigment in your hair, your skin, or your eyes. So you're very sensitive to the sun. Very rare. For having a child with albinism, I believe, is one out of 75. When the twins were born, I was in elementary school. And basically, like, I was so excited because I wanted one to come out looking like me. I didn't care who it was, just somebody come out looking like me. And I was like, oh my gosh, she looks just like me. I started crying. <laughs> that was the best moment ever, man. Awesome. My, my daughter, Shataria, she had bullying. People, you know, call her names. I think she had somebody spit at her before. It was really hard for her. I was like, Mommy, I don't understand why these kids like are treating me like this because at home I got the love. But it's like when I went outside of home, it was a whole different environment. Of course, we were worried about oh, Sharice, you know. Um, Being bullied and the same things that right. Shatiria went through. What the world, what she was facing outside the doors of our house. Yeah. We were worried about that. My sister helped me with my albinism because she comforted me and she helped me because I used to be kind of shy, but now I just like to make friends a lot. We're getting ready to go to Houston, Texas. The twins and Shataria have been chosen to be a part of the Skin I'm In 2019 exhibition and gala by um, celebrity photographer Pharrell Phelps. We haven't seen the photo, so we're really excited to see what he's done with them. <laughs> I'm super excited to go to the Skin I'm in exhibition. I feel like it's going to be awesome. I'm um, amazing to be in a room with everybody that shares something in common. I haven't got to see the pictures yet, so I can't wait to see them. I'm super stoked. When I look in the mirror, I see somebody who has came a long way and my eyebrows are blonde, my eyelashes are blonde, everything is blonde and I used to hate that. But now I look in the mirror and I'm like, yes, you're cute. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm, I'm both nervous and excited to see how it is. Everybody's getting to see their pictures for the first time. It's just gonna be amazing. I'm really happy to be here. What about you guys? I feel so excited and happy. I always wanna do things that make a difference and impact the world. People are prejudiced against each other simply based on skin, melanin, something that God created us to walk the earth in.
The very same thing that they were ridiculed about, ostracized about, they're being highlighted. You and I can't be a part of this show <laughs> because we don't have differences. Well, I feel amazing right now. Today was great. Oh my God, I met so many cool people. We talked, like it felt like we were a family. Seeing my pictures, man, I almost cried. <laughs> I almost cried, but they look super amazing. I'm just really happy I got to be a part of this, and it's just so cool. When you talk about acceptance, and we talk about the Skin I'm In project, I want everybody to be accepted, you know, for their uniqueness, and not necessarily the cookie cutter type, but uniquely beautiful people. I want the modeling industry to change. I want the commercial industry to change. You learn more when you can see the variations of people that exist in the world. I'm, I'm very proud of them accepting who they are. That, that's what I'm most, most proud of. I felt, I felt really happy and excited. I never <laughs> thought that I'd be a part of something like this. Uh, I just thought I was just a regular person. Yeah, we're just normal people. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Cassidy. I'm Caroline. And, and we're, we're fraternal, fraternal twins. twins. <laughs> Growing up with McEwen Albright, it was hard for me to be different. I've definitely broken over at least 50 bones. I'm five foot six inches and I'm four foot three inches. Based on my height, I'll, most people think I'm like sixth grader, fifth grader. And I'm like, no, I'm 23. Thanks though. So I'm the oldest by one minute and I'm the baby. I think our relationship is extremely close. We are definitely best friends and we tell each other everything. And I think we're just closer than what normal, like normal siblings would be. I, I think I'm more like into school. I'm going to medical school, but she's going to law school. I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. Uh, I'm more easygoing. I'm very competitive too. Yeah. I'm not competitive at all. I'm five foot six inches. And I'm four foot three inches. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a foot and three inches difference. Oh buddy, how's the weather down there? <laughs> Pretty cold. <laughs> It didn't surprise me when I found out I was pregnant with twins. I noticed when she was born that there was a brown spot on her back, and we took her to a physician, and they just biopsied it. Well, we found out Caroline had McEwen Albright syndrome right after the biopsy. At six months, we noticed that she was having problems. McEwen Albright is just a bone disease where my bones break very easily. And once they break, they keep breaking because when they heal, it's not regular bone that comes back, it's really soft fibrous tissue, just really, really soft material. McEwen Albright is caused by just a random mutation in her chromosomes. And um, it just happened randomly, like one in 10 million people is what the rate is. So <laughs> that was the lucky one. <laughs> Over my life, I've definitely broken over at least 50 bones. We were in the doctor's office almost monthly there for a while. It was legs and arms, mostly, sometimes ribs. She was riding in a car at a amusement park, and somebody bumped the back of us, and she broke her leg. I broke my right femur in like three places when I fell one time, and they got into surgery and realized it was a lot worse than they expected. And the only way to manope, like, Put it in the cast correctly for it to heal right. I had to do the body cast. Pick her up by this. Had to pick me up like that. Had to ride in the car in the back seat, laying down if I went anywhere. It, <laughs> so, was, it was a rough time. It was a rough time. Especially for a second grader. Yeah, second grader. It was definitely hard just to see like my best friend, twin sister, go through all the pain that she went through. But like I also was like kind of her caregiver and um, even when she would like break a leg, like I would lay in bed with her. She kind of came immune to breaking a bone. Yeah. I, I went I just went and cried, just like, oh, broke my arm, let's go to the let's go to the basketball game. She broke it so many times that the pain <laughs> just came. Normal. Yeah, I just, it didn't hurt anymore. I just was used to it. Where I'd break them so much when I was little, it just completely stunted the growth. So after like I broke them so many times, I stopped growing pretty much in like sixth grade. Based on my height, uh, most people think I'm like 
um, sixth grader, fifth grader. And I'm like, no, I'm 23. Thanks, though. I'm definitely protective over Caroline. Like, if I see anyone, like, staring at her, I'll go up to him, like, do you want to take a picture or something? <laughs> I will not let anyone overstep her or anything. I definitely have to be, I think, a lot more cautious than most people do. And I definitely have to plan out my day a lot more than someone else like Cassie would have to do. Like, mm -hmm. I have to think about where I'm going to park and how close that is from where I have to get to go and how much I'm going to be walking and how much stress I'd be on my bones and stuff because I don't want to break anything. I love swimming, which is a great way for me to work out because it keeps the stress from occurring in my bones because I'm like pretty much weightless. So I swim almost every day. I do a bunch of laps. Um, I do a lot of stretches in the pool that helps keep my muscles strong. I have to be very cautious about how much I work out and if I'm lifting weights, I usually lift weights for my arms and I have to be very cautious with how much I lift because if I lift too much, then this will just snap in half. So I have to be very cautious with that. I'm about to start medical school in two weeks at the University of Kentucky. Well, I'll start law school in about three weeks and I'll be at SIU, so Southern Illinois. We are gonna be four hours apart, which is the furthest we've ever, ever been. been. Yeah. Yeah. Um, nervous, but excited to Thank do her God own we thing. FaceTime. Yeah, we'll definitely be FaceTiming. It makes me anxious because, you know, I've always had her and she's been my best friend, so it's going to be really hard. Yeah. But like you said, we got to grow up and do our own things. And eventually, you know, I guess it's going to happen. Yeah, someday. it's going to happen sometime. Even though we're going to live in the same house. Yeah, we're like, we plan to live in the same house when raise, we get like 30. Yeah, just raise cats and dogs. <laughs> yeah, so you don't want to get married. <laughs> So we're about to head to Del Hollow Lake. Um, it's basically our second home. We have a houseboat down there and a speedboat. We go every other weekend with her friends. I think Caroline yeah. definitely lifts our confidence yes. when we're around her. She's always our hype woman. <laughs> she always just brings us joy. I think she, she's 100% a badass. She's like the most inspirational person that we have in our group. Also, like, she's super positive. There definitely couldn't be a Caroline without a Cassidy, and there couldn't be a Cassidy without a Caroline. Definitely not. I feel like since they've grown up together and they know each other so well, they've kind of molded each other into the person that they, that they are today. And I feel like any disability or anything has never even been a factor in that whatsoever. Caroline and Cassidy are both great friends, and they love each other. They support each other. And that's a great relief to me, knowing when I'm gone that, uh, the best part about being born different is that you are different, but you should never let that hold up, like hold you back and just be you. Honestly, Caroline, you're the strongest person I know. You are. Thank you. And I try to be like you each and every single day. Love you. I love you. I just want to hug. Exactly. <laughs>
people don't understand what causes it, for how mm. it's affected the left-hand side of his face. Thankfully, not his mobility. He does also have a diagnosis of autism. He does struggle with communication, so you can't really engage Harry in a conversation. We like the piano. What else do we like? Mm. We like li <laughs> lips. He functions around about four years old for many things. So he has challenges in terms of expressing himself, in terms of personal care, in terms of dealing with other people. He has no danger awareness. He does bring different challenges to the relationship. Right, there? Oliver wants a brother and a playmate. Harry just wants his own space and to be left alone. Uh, and he can, he can be quite demanding, but he can also lash out at times. So we do have a fabulous relationship as a unit, as a family, but equally it is really challenging and I don't think it's fair to pretend otherwise, really. What's wrong? The theatre built. Thank you very much. There we go, I'll bring mine. Come on, it's up first. Good boy. We're different or the same, Harry? We're the same? Okay. Well, going to hire the same. I think we are, to some respect anyway. We're still brothers, we like the same things, mostly anyway. I often say that in families like ours, it's the siblings of the, the children with the conditions that are the unsung heroes. He has had to accept sometimes being a little bit in the background when Harry's conditions have taken priority. He's always been a young carer. One thing I like with drawing is, it's kind of peaceful, I can just relax. Like one of the only things that just calms me down. Being a young carer is kind of like, like you've always got to help them with stuff or put your own needs after theirs because like the respect of everything their needs are much higher than yours. You can never really relax. So I guess it's just draining really. Because you never really know what's going to happen with someone when they're autistic. It could be fine one minute and then they could lose it the next. It's quite difficult to know how aware Harry is of his conditions. When Harry was much younger and he looked much different before his surgery, we'd have people pointing, staring, whispering, saying nasty things, calling him names, following us around stores. So that was really challenging. So in many ways, the autism does protect him a lot from the prejudice and discrimination that's out there to people that do look different at times. Oliver was probably around five or six years old when he began to realise how people were reacting to Harry. And, and I could see that it would make him really angry and he just didn't know what to do with that anger. No, all the way around. Oh, I love you. <laughs> I'm quite protective of Harry when we're out and about, so... The way I am now, I'm always looking for people to insult him. I'm always looking around thinking that people are staring at him, even if they're not. There are, there are positive sides to having a brother like Harry. Like, You've always got a younger brother, you've always got someone to share a laugh with. Harry, is Oliver a good brother, yes or no? <sighs> yes. You heard it, I'm a good brother. Oh. What are you watching, mate? For me, social media is, is a brilliant platform. We have had trolls and we've had negative experiences. So we've had people send messages with things like he should be killed with fire, that he's an abomination of God, that he's disgusting and disgraceful, that his face shouldn't be shown. But for every one person that's awful, there's an army of people with compassion and love and acceptance who are willing to stand up for Harry. I think probably the biggest thing that having my boys has taught me as a parent is that there's no such thing as perfect. Sometimes imperfectly perfect is good enough. We're the only female identical twins, where one's a primordial dark and one's not. People do often think I'm younger, and so they, they treat me differently. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Nothing changed. My name is Sienna Bernal, I am 20. My name is Sierra Bernal. I'm 20 years old. And, and we're, we're twins. twins.
sometimes whenever people find out that we're twins, they'll ask, oh, okay, but how old is she? So a lot of times, even after we've established that we're twins, they'll ask her if she's younger. Yeah. I'm like, that's how twin works. We're the sex same age. Sienna and Sierra share everything. Yeah, I like But there's that. one thing that sets them apart from one another. Sienna has a rare genetic condition, and Sierra doesn't. I have what's called primordial dorsism, which you basically means I'm small and proportionate. Kind of like a child, but not. I'm not a child, I'm actually an adult. I just look like a child. Let's clarify that, people. When Sienna was born, they actually said that she would probably not make it past 24 hours. We, we got told that a lot. And then they said if she did survive, which they gave her a 10% chance of making it out of the hospital, they said that she would most likely be a vegetable. Sienna has a genesis of the corpus callosum, which is the membrane that separates your left and right hemisphere of your brain. They expected to cause her to be a vegetable. I think it's done something to, to her brain. I could give her a quarter a dime and a nickel, and she couldn't tell me that it's 40 cents. But when it comes to theology, you can read a Bible verse to her, and she can break it down for you and tell you exactly what it means. I find that pretty wild, you know. Some of the simplest things she really has the hardest time grasping hold of. Me and Sierra, we have a pretty good bond. We like to watch TV together, we're all together. And it's sometimes it feels weird when we're apart. The twins are incredibly close, but due to Sienna's condition, they're often treated quite differently. People do often think I'm younger than my age because she's a gopher twin, and so they think she's like an older sister. And so they, they treat me differently. They go to her normally, and then when they talk to me, I get kid. So like they'll be like, oh, how are you? And I'm like, I'm fine. I'm. 20 years old. I'm extremely protective over my sister, which I think has made her a little sassier because she knows Sierra's gonna take care of it if there's a problem. You might think I'm a diva, but that's okay. The twins share a lot, but they have both pursued quite different passions. Sienna is all about Disney, all about mermaids. She could stand up in front of a room of 200 people and give an hour and a half long speech about mermaids. And by the time she was done, you would think mermaids are real. I like, I like mermaids, okay? I'm just gonna put it out there, all right? They're super unique and they're different. And then my tail, ooh, pink. So they're kinda like two worlds. They're like, they got the human and the fish world, so they're kinda the best of both. Oh, my, so cool. my sister taught me how to swim the first time and then she taught me how to swim again. <laughs> Cause I forgot. My sister taught me to do a lot. My position actually does make me cold a lot, so that's why I wear a jacket and like this. I'm wearing because I get easily cold in cold water. I always wear lay layers of clothing when I swim, so that way I try to keep warm as much as possible. Gotta look fabulous while I try to stay warm. While Sienna is everything mermaid, her sister is a country musician who performs across the US. I started writing songs when I was about 12. I actually write songs for other people as well. I play guitar, I play mandolin, I play cajon, I play piano, and I play um, a little bit of ukulele. I have a band. I love my band. They're so great. They've been with me for years. I mean, this is my job and I absolutely love it. And today, her sister is coming to see her perform at a local event. Some little people have really tiny and small ears. So that's why I'm hard of hearing because my ears and my bones are so small. So I can't hear very well. And I have to listen to her. And I do tell her like, that was a good song. Like, hey, you did good here. I'm like, hey, I like this song, so I'm really going to do a song more because I like it. I, I want to graduate college and get a good degree. 
and I wanted to have thought a mermaid career eventually. She has days when she's literally said to me, you know, Dad, why did God make me so small? And I just said, maybe because if he made you full size, you'd try to take over the world. <laughs> as far as being proud of both Sierra and Sienna goes, I've, I'm, I've never been more proud. I always thought, I always tell people like, follow your heart where your heart tells you. That's what I'm trying to know. I'm trying to follow where my heart leads me. Take a chance. You only live once, so I might as well go big and go home. <laughs>